Let's talk about the anatomy of the endotracheal tube. Starting from the top, we have a standard 15 millimeter connector that attaches to circuit tubing of the ventilator. This side is standard on all airway equipment to avoid a nightmarish situation where somebody has to look for the right adapter. Then we have the pilot balloon with a spring-loaded one-way valve to inflate the balloon. This valve prevents the air from leaking back out when the syringe is disconnected. The inflatable cuff does two things. It seals the trachea so that the positive pressure can't escape from the lower airways, and it seals the upper airway so that the patient doesn't aspirate any secretions or stomach contents. And this is an example of how it occludes the trachea. Looking at the tube itself, you'll notice that the curvature of the AT tube is in the natural shape of the airway. This development was actually an accident. The man responsible for the modern AT tube was McGill, and his assistant cut the first tubes he used for research from a roll of rubber tubing which inherited the memory of the cylindrical roll in which it was stored. To this day, the curvature of the AT tube is called the McGill curve. The black line is suggested vocal cords marker. The size of the tube in this case is 6.5, and that's the internal diameter of the tube. Finally, we have the depth markers to indicate the position of the tube with the teeth. The depth usually depends on the gender. Then we have the white line, which is radio opaque, and it's there to assist with identification of the tube on the x-ray. And now for my favorite part is this little opening called the Murphy's Eye, which ensures that even if the main opening is occluded in some way by secretions or otherwise, ventilations can still occur.